My fascination with single six revolvers started back when I was just a kid. Western movies and television shows certainly had a lot to do with that. You know, there's just something about wrapping my hand around the butt of a single six. The way they feel and handle is like shaking hands with an old friend. Let's face it, collecting original Colts, Smith & Wessons, and Remingtons are out of most people's price range, but reproductions generally aren't. This Cimarron, chambered in 45 Colt, feels and handles exactly like a Colt. The bird's head grip really does give it a distinctive look. Although I like the grips that originally came on this bird's head, I decided that I wanted to put some period-looking ivory grips on it. And that's when I ran straight into a brick wall. Couldn't find ivory bird's head grips anywhere. My buddy Batjack JW suggested I contact Buffalo Brothers and see what they had to offer. I did, and they had exactly what I was looking for. It goes to prove you do need to know the right people. By the way, if you're not already subscribed to Backjack JW's channel, you're missing out. I'll leave a link to his channel down below. So, when we're finished here, head over to Batjack's channel and hit that subscribe button. You'll be glad you did. This nickel-plated 1873 Colt replica is a copy of a 5.5 inch barrel 45 caliber Generation 1 pre-war Colt, and I have to say it's an excellent shooter. This particular model is said to be replicated in precise detail from an original 1873 Colt single action that resides in Cimarron's antique collection, and it wasn't reproduced from drawings as with some of their other models. This Cimarron six-shooter might not say Colt on it, but it's as close to one as I'm ever likely to get and still be able to afford it. The grips I chose to go on this revolver replaced the smooth factory grips that originally came on it. The Diamond Checkered Buffalo Brothers grips are a lot less slippery. Grips with a slick finish look pretty, but don't work out on a gun I intend to actually shoot very much. These not only look nice, they're actually functional. Another reproduction in my collection is this Uberti 38 caliber 1875 Remington. It'll shoot the 38 long Colt, 38 Special, and the 357 Magnum cartridges equally well. The frame on this model is beautifully case hardened and features a richly blued cylinder and barrel. The fit and finish is absolutely top notch. Let me tell you, this revolver is a real pleasure to shoot. This 1875 is sporting a pair of Buffalo Brothers Antique Ivory Grips. The checkering on these grips certainly provide a lot better gripping surface than the smooth walnut grips that originally came on it. I think they look more authentic, too. Even though the Remington was never quite as popular as the Colt, I can certainly see why some people preferred this model over the Colt. In the modern single six category, I own several Rugers. This example is chambered in 45 Colt. I've actually had this seven and a half inch new model Blackhawk in my collection since 1974. I couldn't even begin to speculate how many rounds I've fired through this revolver over the years. It's still going strong. I just can't say enough about how well made and durable these Rugers are. If you haven't figured it out by now, I'm a sucker for nice grips. The ones I chose to go on this revolver are also from Buffalo Brothers and feature an antique ivory finish and a carved floral pattern. And I really do like the way they look on this Ruger. One of my more recent acquisitions is this all stainless Ruger convertible. This Blackhawk is chambered for one of my favorite handgun cartridges, which is, of course, 10 millimeter. It also came with a companion cylinder chambered for the 40 Smith & Wesson, and it doesn't require moon clips to fire either of these rimless cartridges. Since I like the way rosewood looks on handguns with a stainless finish, I decided on this pair. They feature diamond checkering, and they're a bit more aggressive than the smooth factory grips. I do like these a lot better. This last example is also a Ruger convertible. It's an old model minted back in the 1960s. 
It's chambered for 22 rimfire and has the 22 Magnum companion cylinder. These old model Rugers are actually quite collectible, and this one's still in pristine condition. Unlike the new model Rugers, these older models didn't come with a transfer bar safety. At one time, Ruger offered to retrofit these old model single sixes with a transfer bar setup. All you had to do was send it in and they'd do the modifications for your charge. This one never has had that modification done to it, which according to several knowledgeable Ruger collectors I've spoken to over the years, makes this unmodified example even more collectible. For me, growing up in southern Arizona, ingrained more than just a passing interest in Old West culture and lore. There were lots of historical places to explore and plenty of interesting things to see. There was nothing I liked better than heading over to Tombstone to catch the gunfight reenactments, or I could always head over to Old Tucson and see what they had going on. Never did get tired of it. If you find that sort of thing interesting, there's another channel you absolutely have to subscribe to, and that channel is Arizona Ghost Riders. Santee's the host over there, and he and his cohorts are working hard to keep the spirit of the Old West alive. His channel is not only educational, it's extremely entertaining. I'll leave a link to Santee's channel down below, so don't forget to head over and hit that subscribe button. Well, that pretty much wraps things up for today. If you'd like to see a more in-depth review on one of the revolvers you saw in this video, let me know in the comments section below and I'll be more than happy to arrange that. Until next time, practice often, shoot straight, and thanks for stopping by.